Welcome everyone to What's Happening in Crypto, exploring all of the latest from the crypto world and beyond. How are high net worth individuals affecting the cryptocurrency markets? Well, high net worth individuals, these are the 0.0001% of the world's population, but they control an enormous amount of the world's wealth. To be a high net worth individual, you're typically thought of as having more than $100 million at your disposal. Now, these guys start what are called family offices. These family offices currently have around $4 trillion of assets. That's more than hedge funds or the equivalent of around 6% of the value of all global stock markets, which is massive, or 8% of the total wealth globally. Whoa! That is a tremendous amount of wealth concentrated in a very, very few hands. When you start to look at the numbers, these people could buy the entire cryptocurrency market relatively easily if they were to put all their money and resources together, of course. Now, the family offices are an important part of the cryptocurrency equation because everyone's always sitting around saying, well, when's Wall Street going to come and save everyone in the crypto markets? And of course, we do not need Wall Street, guys. They're part of the problem. But the high net worth individuals are a factor that aren't talked about a lot when it comes to cryptocurrencies. But these family offices have a tremendous amount of power and investing power, particularly, which is of interest to us, and they are investing in cryptos. They have been for some time, and I imagine will continue to do so in the future. Now, the family office was really designed in order to cut out the middleman, which of course was the, the banks and the brokers, because unsurprisingly, too many fees. Even when you are uh, a billionaire, fees are still an important thing because the percentages don't change. If you're moving a billion dollars in assets and someone's trying to take 2% of that, that's still 2%. That's a lot of money. And it starts to add up very quickly over time. The family offices have found that they can actually cut out this middleman to have more profits for themselves. But this actually what takes a, what's already an opaque industry and makes it even more opaque by moving it into these smaller family offices. Now, the one bonus about family offices is that they're usually more startup friendly and they are not so beholden to things like the big corporate funds are. All these big corporate funds, for example, are sitting around waiting for the Bitcoin ETF because they're not allowed to invest in Bitcoin right now. They have laws that they need to follow. The family offices do not. They are much more nimble when it comes to what they can and cannot invest in. And that is part of the reason why we have seen them investing in cryptocurrencies already, why we've seen them investing in ICOs and other things like this. Now, a lot of the custody services that we have that are starting to come to life, part of their market is not just going to be hedge funds, but it's going to be these family offices. They're looking to cater to these people. Now, these family offices have already been um, skilled enough to hold their own Bitcoin, for example, but I think that we'll see even more family offices getting involved or more certainty from family offices as these services do develop, as these more serious financial tools like the Bitcoin ETF do come into play, even though they don't need to wait for a Bitcoin ETF to be able to invest in Bitcoin, some of those family offices may be much more conservative and will wait until they have more regulatory clarity and certainty before putting more money into the cryptocurrency markets. Now, there's no family office, to my knowledge, that is 100% crypto. No, the family offices are actually usually very diversified in their holdings. Real estate, gold, stocks, all kinds of different Forex and things like this globally in order to have a very diversified and theoretically safer portfolio. Cryptocurrencies make up just a small percentage of their portfolios. But nevertheless, it does show that these family offices are interested in crypto and they are investing in crypto. And if they see this industry becoming even more serious, they will bring even more money into the table. Now, these family offices, they have so many advantages compared to even some of the hedge funds, but definitely to a normal investor. I'm thinking of all the privileged access to this early information they're going to be getting. The ability to move between tax zones, for example, also a very big benefit that high money investors and corporations, of course, can access that regular investors can't. Now, 
these family offices even have their own conferences sometimes. I've seen a couple conferences this year that were family office conferences. So the family offices will all go, crypto companies will go trying to woo these family offices into investing in their companies. So that's something to keep in mind. It is a very, very big, but little talked about part of the industry, but they are a very, very powerful force. Now, this is in my mind, a lot like Wall Street. Everybody wants Wall Street to come in. Everybody wants them to bring their dirty tricks in and bring in that big flood of money to save cryptocurrencies and get the price to go back up. Again, we really need adoption. What we see with family offices is a large part of the same problem that we see with Wall Street. Now, Wall Street is a, you know run by banks and they're particularly corrupt, but family offices aren't here to help you. You just got to keep that in mind. They're not. They're really not. They're here to help a very, very small select group of incredibly wealthy people. They are a consequence of the current crony capitalist system that we have, but they know how to take advantage of that system. They know how to move from tax zone to tax zone. They know how to find ways to get investments that will have lower fees and all this kind of stuff. Inequality grows. Family offices are vehicles to continue the growth of inequality globally. So yeah, it's nice to see billionaires investing in crypto. I mean, hey, that's cool. It's, it's open to everyone. Anyone can invest in crypto. But this is one of those things that much like Wall Street, we don't need the high net worth individuals. We need people to actually start using crypto on a day-to-day -day basis, buying coffees and buying computers and all these different things, getting paid in crypto, being able to pay your bills in crypto. All of these things are what is going to give a lot of value. I know everyone talks about, let's, you know, bank the unbanked and give them financial services and let's get international remittances happening in Bitcoin and stuff. Well, that's all great. But even if every remittance globally happened in Bitcoin, it would still be nowhere near the amount of assets that these high net worth individuals in the family offices possess. Because that is the nature of global inequality right now, that such a tiny fraction of people have so much wealth. Now, the family offices, they're just this whole different beast that are out there operating, but they are powerful. They are out there. They are a big player in the crypto scene. And I'm not particularly welcoming of them in the same way that I'm not welcoming of Wall Street. But we have to adjust for the reality of billionaires investing in crypto. They're people, billionaires are people too, guys. But it's not a positive thing. This is just the rich getting richer. For a lot of people, they see cryptocurrencies as something that lets the little guy get a bit of wealth into their hands. Hopefully this can be more of the case for crypto. What we certainly don't want to see is billionaires buying up all the Bitcoin now and selling it back to the average guy at $20,000 again. That's not how we get ahead. That's how massive transferences of wealth from the poor to the rich continue to happen. Something to keep in mind. Anyway, just a few of my thoughts on family offices and their potential impacts on this very small crypto market, certainly compared to the markets that they invest in. I would love to know your thoughts on family offices down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching today's video. You are super awesome. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. If you want to know when I put out a new video, hit the notification bell. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.